the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In today's Gospel, our Lord Jesus Christ talks about his departure from the Apostles. And this scene is, in fact, taken from the Last Supper, just the day before Christ dies on the cross. But as St. Augustine explains, Christ is referring here to his ascension, and then his return at the end of time. A little while and you shall not see me, and again a little while and you shall see me. This first little while, after this first little while, Christ will ascend, and so the disciples will not see him again. And then after again a little while, this is the time of our continued exile here on this earth, Christ will return in glory. And as we now go through the Easter season and we are following, we might say the disciples during this time, this word of Christ as they as they remember it, as he appears to them and then is not with them for a time, then appears again, this word of Christ must have been a source of some sorrow to them. Just as we might say they are getting used to a resurrected Christ being among them. But we can also imagine during this time after the resurrection that the disciples begin to discover more and more the role of Mary. It was on the cross that our Lord gave his mother to St. John. Woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. And so during this time, as Christ is not there all the time, the disciples would necessarily begin to discover more and more the spiritual riches which she had and which she had to give them. And then also would come perhaps a growing realization of the depth of those words, Behold thy mother, that Mary was in fact to be the mother of this little community of Christ's disciples. Lost and alone in a hostile world, we see them instinctively gather around her at the, just after the ascension and at a time of Pentecost. They are there with her in the cenacle. And this gradual realization of the apostles during this time, the increasing importance of Mary in their lives, finds an echo in the course of the history of the Church. Today we lament Christ's disappearance, we might say, from so many aspects of modern life. Modern man has tried to to chase away, to destroy Christ's image in civilization, in men and women, and even in the innocence of childhood. And the world grows darker and darker as man chases away the light. So we are perhaps very much as these apostles, feeling somewhat abandoned, surrounded by hostility, and in the last analysis, so few, so few who hold on to the words of Christ and try not to pervert them as so many have done. But this is the point that as the darkness over the earth increases, so much the brighter does the moon begin to shine? And God has not given any other answer to this darkness of the world than his own mother. Fair as the moon, bright as the sun, terrible as an army set in battle array. So it is for us then, like the apostles, to realize more and more the role that Our Lady truly has in this world and in our own lives. God has given us a mother, and we must go to her. And it's no accident that in these latter times, we might say, these recent years, relatively speaking, we see these declarations about Our Lady. We see these apparitions of Our Lady. She is beginning to shine more and more brightly. When we go and return and visit our natural mother, the one who gave us birth, it's quite normal to to feel ourselves children again. We remember 
the way she took care of us, all of the old mannerisms, we might say, and how we relied so much on her loving care. And it's the same when we go to Our Lady. We will be able to be children again. She will restore to us that childhood that is necessary to enter the kingdom. Tomorrow we begin the month of Our Lady, the month of May, and so let us go to her in prayer and devotion, but also and especially let us go to her intelligently. Let us ask her not for just anything, but for what she most of all wants to give us, and that is an understanding of her son and a likeness to her son. And that means an understanding of the cross and a love of that cross. This is what Mary wants to give us, not to completely dispel all of the darkness of this world. That will be for Christ's second coming. That's when he will come again in glory. But she will give to us to shine as she does with a light received from Christ. And let us also during this time, this month of Mary, let us try to read a little bit more about her, to try to understand her motherhood more deeply. Real piety is always founded on truth. And so we must establish our devotion to Our Lady on solid truths about her. It's the time, for example, to read again about the Immaculate Conception, read again about the Assumption, these great dogmatic truths of the last hundred, two hundred years. As the world darkens, it should be our joy to see Our Lady shine forth more and more brightly. And as she, she shines still more brightly, so must the more must our instinct to go to her increase. She will really be our joy on this earth, and a joy that indeed no man shall take from us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.